Hi, everybody. I'm Monty McKinnon, and I want to wish all my American friends a very happy Thanksgiving. It's a special time for you, a time for you to get together with your family and to celebrate and have all that great food. Do enjoy your day and make sure you stay safe. Today on our build, what we're going to be doing is gluing up all the support pieces on the top, and I'm going to show you that in just a moment. But first, let's spin that intro and then we'll get back to the top. Okay, here we are at the top, at the go-bar deck. I've got our go-bars hanging on the wall. I'll get those in just a moment. But first, I wanted to show you exactly where we're at. While we were gone, I cut off the end pieces that we had sticking out here, and I took the cut-off pieces, and those I'll just throw out of the way. Now, I have taken all the bars and I have measured the very center part, and I know because they had a radius on them, I wanted to be at the center, and I want that center to come down the center seam of the guitar. So I have measured each piece and marked it so that when it lines up, it lines up exactly perfect with the, with the center of the curvature in the center of the, of the guitar top. Now, the first thing I did, was to make this plate. This is for the bridge. It's a bridge plate. It's down to about 995 thousandths of an inch. It's pretty thin. I have sanded over the leading edge and the back edge just to take the bead off of that. And this fits perfectly flush with this so that when it goes into here, it's absolutely perfect and it's right where I want it to be. This is a call that I made for a previous guitar, and I've got all of this cut, and this fits in here absolutely perfect. You'd swear I made it for this. It's perfect. I know it'll work because, and the angles are right, because I've used this before. So this you'll see us use in just a minute or two. I have a small piece here, and where the two pieces cross here on the angle, there's, they come down like this, right? So that there's one part that has two open joints at the top, and I will glue this over top of that, and then we'll shape it, but that will then protect that and keep that solid. So each of the parts, once I had them done, I did my measurements again to the center. I measured this to the center, and I know that running, I think you can see this all right, from the end of the ruler to the front of this is, is uh, 40 millimeters, and then running down to here is another 45 millimeters. So I know exactly where I need to be, and I measured this so that when I put this in, it lines up perfectly. I've cut the angles here, and what I did in order to get these angles perfect and the angle on the bridge patch, what I simply did, this is what the bridge patch piece was that I used. I, no, I just simply set it across there like that. I took this, I took a ruler, I lined it up, and I drew a line. Once I had my line, I then cut that on the bandsaw on the wide side. And then what I did is I bumped it up against the sander, just pushing it into the sander. There's the cutoff piece that I used, until it fit absolutely perfect, but it was too wide. So knowing that I needed this to be approximately one and three quarter inches or one and seven eighths, some people actually use two inches, this is one and seven eighths. So I ended up measuring down from the top, one and seven eighths, drew my line, ran it through the saw, the band saw, cut that off, and then I took that piece and I bumped it up against the sander just to take the edge off so that when I would 
sand it, I would just make it easy. So if somebody, and there will be somebody, you know that, will put their hand through the sound hole and want to feel all the wood inside here, and they'll feel this nice and smooth. I will actually end up sanding this probably with about a 1,000 grit because it, I, I just like it nice and smooth and neat. So that's what we're gonna to do today. We're gonna to put that in there. This goes back up in here. This is the bottom piece, it's going across there. These are support pieces that go on the side and, and they run off the corner of this and the corner up here. So when this is down here, I just simply eyeball this, give it a, a, a placement here, and these two pieces fit like so. Now. What I did in order to make sure that when I started gluing this, I wouldn't mess up, I numbered each one of these. Now, one other thing I want you to see. Remember I told you about the top, I decided not to, to um, use the curvature, I'm gonna use the flat side, so I know I've got the flat side here. I took it to the drill press and I drilled a small hole through here. That's where the Allen wrench is gonna go through to make an adjustment in the truss rod if I need to. Now that hole is smaller than I would like, but because of the size of wood, I just don't wanna make a bigger one. So when it's glued in place, I'll clamp it, it gets glued into the middle. I will then use these two round files. This is a smaller one, this is a larger one. And I will simply, run the files through that hole and I'll enlarge it and bring it down to the top and then just slightly where I've got that ring running around the, the center, I will just make a little groove in there and you'll see that as we get that done. So I'm gonna start gluing this up and I know that's kind of boring for you. You're more than welcome to stay around and, and watch this as we do this. In fact, I'd like you to. All these are numbered. I don't have to worry about where anything is going. I know where everything is going to fit. And there's what we have. Everything is, is fitting perfectly. And I did just drop that small piece up here, but I'll pick that up in a minute. So before I glue this on, which we will do right now, I will take a razor blade. I'll take a razor blade and I just want to scrape it for any oxidization that would be on here. I know it's crazy and I probably don't need to do this, but there you go. All right, that's, that's good to go. Now, I will put my glasses on so I can make sure that I can see this is good and tight. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Now I'm gonna do one other little thing here. I'm just gonna make a tiny little mark. so that I can put just the smallest little bead in there. Here we go. I don't mind squeeze out on this. In fact, I would like it. So, and I'm doing the edge. Tough with the hands, look at that, how they shake. Man, I tell you, there's not too many little guitars left in these hands. That is just awful. Come on, doctors, help me out with this. I happen to have on the 
bridge plate itself, the center mark in white so I can line it up with the seam and I know that it's there and I know that it's tight against the X brace. So that's something that I wanted to do to make sure that that would be like that. Now we'll just put the call on top of that. And I'm going to put that like that. Putting that in there like that. So what I'm going to do now is I will let that set for the next 45 minutes to an hour and it will set in place. I will take those braces off and then I will brace the next set. This way I can get into the edge and clean it up as I go along without having everything in there and all these go bars hanging down there and I'm trying to fit in it. It just doesn't work out well like that. So we'll do this a little bit at a time. That's one of the reasons why I numbered it. And then once this is all done, I'll bring it back here and we'll fasten it to the top of the desk here. And then I'm gonna sharpen some chisels. I'm gonna make sure that they're like a razor blade and then we're going to shape all of the bracing on the guitar and listen to how it sounds and then after that it's a case of putting it onto here and we'll see what we can do by the way i want you to know that i didn't like the shape of this and i have taken it down a little more and i'm happy with that so that's going to work out just fine i do have a new addition in the shop and I'll be talking more about that in our next video because I want to do a real short shop tour. So why not send me pictures of your shop so I could feature them here on the channel? I already have some and I'm going to put them up real soon. So if you'd like, make sure they're in the landscape mode and by all means, send me two, three pictures of your shop and maybe a picture of your favorite tool. And if you have any narrative to go with that, I'll be happy to put that onto the, the channel. So I want to do that. I want to, let's visit in our shops. Come on, let's, let's do it. So we've come to that time when it's appropriate for me to say English breakfast tea, that just warms my heart. And today, in order to make it really special, I don't have a biscuit, but I have some fruit bread which is just, or fruit cake, I guess, which is just delightful, and I'm gonna partake in that. And that's the best I can do to be part of your Thanksgiving. So I hope you do have a great time with your family. Thanks, friends. I'll catch you in the next video. Really? To go through life and not drink English breakfast tea? It's like looking outside and there's no sunshine. It's like no rain for your crops. It's like no strings for your guitar. It's like playing golf with no golf ball. It's just not complete. You have to try English breakfast tea. Give it a shot, you'll like it. A number of people have told me they're switching from coffee to English breakfast tea. Well, they may be just augmenting their coffee with English breakfast tea. And I do have somebody that told me they saw somebody you and I know drinking a cup of tea. I'm gonna challenge him on that shortly. All right, Pete, take notice, we're watching. Bye, everybody.